Hello, Silent Signs. Hello, hello. Before we get into I Dream of Indie Games Weekly for this week, we want to take a moment to thank our great sponsor, George Alexandros. His upcoming JRPG will be releasing on the 30th of January, Elohim Eternal The Babel Code. Sorry to babble on. That's quite all right. This looks like a RPG of the J variety. Yeah, smoke up a J. What? <laughs> <laughs> According to the Steam page, you'll be exploring a vibrant world where ancient religions fuse with technology in this character-driven JRPG. There is a deep turn-based combat system as you play as Joshua Asa. I hope I'm saying that right. You'll face your foes in the form of mecha-infused beasts. Mecha mecha high, mecha hiney ho. Something like that, but it looks like some great strategy elements to this one. Lots of ways to customize your fighting style. Enemy weaknesses can be exposed. There are elementals to equip and tons of magical abilities as well. And there's even some religious undertones here. Gotta love it. Do you love classic JRPGs as much as I do, Silent Signs? I sure do. Well, this might be right up your alley. Look at those visuals. Kind of looks straight out of the 16-bit era, doesn't it? I do love me some turn-based combat, and I am really enjoying this art style. It definitely looks straight out of a couple decades ago, but I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a couple decades old, too, at this point. Aren't so, we all? <laughs> so what the heck? Y'all should head on down to the description box below. We have links to Elohim Eternal, the Babel Code. You can check out the Steam page and wish list if you so wish, or make a dang purchase because it looks great. But I think we've babbled on enough. Let's get into the news, shall we? Let's do it. Once again, thank you so much to George Alexandros for sponsoring this week's edition of I Dream of Indie Games Weekly. Well, howdy, howdy, ho, indie neighbors. I'm Old Gamer Joe, and this is Silent Signs. Are you ready for some more indie game news this week? Because I sure am. Right here at I Dream of Indie Games, bringing a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. Remember, you can hit the subscribe button, like, do all those great things, comment down below, let us know what you think of us, if you want me to shut up, if you love me. We want to hear it all, folks. Patreon.com slash I Dream of Indie Games for ad-free and sponsor-free content as well. Or you can hit the join button for cool custom emoji and all that YouTube fun stuff. What's new, Silent Science? How's things going? You were talking to me a little bit off camera before about Blue's Clues for some reason. Were you into these child shows? You said handy dandy, and oh. I can't <laughs> think of handy dandy without a handy dandy notebook. What's this all about? Was there like some sort of affiliation between handy dandy and Blue's Clues? Yeah. Like, I didn't watch the show, like Steve I mentioned. Steve so. had a handy dandy notebook. Look, I did a lot of babysitting, so I saw all of the children's shows. I did watch a little Barney here or there, and I also, my well, it wasn't me, but my friend had one of those Rock'em Sock'em like things that pop up not like Rock'em Sock'em robots but you know like the balloons you would pull uh, up and they bounce you punch them and they bounce back that's a punching bag were you punch thinking of um yeah the, uh, kind of like a punching bag but it was Sock'em Boppers yes Yes, that's what it was. I and knew the word would come to me. And he had a Barney one. So you'd hit it and Barney would pop back up. And then his mother walked in on me once. I was just kicking the shit out of Barney. Well, sock and boppers were the things. <laughs> it's such a funny <laughs> word. You put on your fists. No, I didn't have that. And like they were inflatable gloves. boxing gloves. And they were called sock and boppers. And you could like punch your brother and he wouldn't get as hurt as he <laughs> otherwise would like, have. Get that pent up anger out of you. Uh, I don't know. Sock and I feel like kids were probably still damaged by that. Oh no, stuff. yeah, they definitely were. <laughs> that was probably a lawsuit. That was one of those right. things where like you would hold your sibling after you like accidentally hurt them or like played a little too rough and they were like, please don't tell mom. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Don't tell mom. Well, all of that aside, I smell a rat somewhere, Silent Signs, so let's... It's not me, I showered. Well, it's not you, you don't smell... You always smell pretty good, I would say. No. Like, well, sometimes when you go jogging, you might not smell good enough. Yeah, but, no. But let's get into story number one. Okay. What do we have here from PQ? Do you remember Curse of the Sea Rats? I remember we played a demo for it right we here. We sure at did. Yeah. Really cool animated art style. Lots of rats. Ratroidvania? It's a Ratroidvania. <laughs> yes. So releasing April 6th is my understanding. Finally, we have a release date. This one's coming to PC, Switch, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series S, X, and the one. The only. <laughs> Xbox, <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> Embark on the epic journey of four prisoners of the British Empire, transformed into rats by the notorious pirate witch Flora Burn. To regain their human bodies, they will have to fight many dangerous bosses, uncover the secrets of the vast Irish coast, and ultimately capture the witch who cursed them. I really enjoyed this, what we played of it. I love the cartoon aesthetic. It reminds me of like Saturday morning cartoons. Looks like they're going to do a physical version here as well. You can pre-order that. Who's that coming from, actually? Uh, is that direct from PQ, I guess? Uh, maybe so. I believe it's just directly from PQ. You can get physical editions of this game. Those are going to be going live pretty soon for pre-order. And yeah, I'm excited about this. How do you feel about that? Uh, me too. I remember it was distinctly challenging. Yes, it was um, tough. But that makes sense. I'm not great at games. But a little less tough if you play it with friends. Definitely. I Am I remembering right, too? Yes. You can have more than one friend play? I believe so. Yeah, but we just really had the two of us at the time. So I love the idea of a Metroidvania you can play together, though, because then two of you can be lost amongst the map. Yeah, you don't feel so alone. Okay, next up is one from Super Rare Originals. Let's see if I can pronounce this. Oxo? Oxo? O-T-X-O? Let's just go with that. But right. what I can tell you is it sure has the look of Hotline Miami. And the sound. One of my feel. favorites. Developed by Lateralis. Not that Tool album, by the way. Or is that a song? Is it an album too? I believe it's an album and a song, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Lateralis. But I don't oh. believe it's spelled this way. This is Lateralis. The developer behind Dog World, this fast-paced and dark roguelite with precise but savage gunplay and time-bending slow motion will be out on Steam on April 20th. Enter an inexplicable abstract mansion to rescue a loved one in this violent top-down shooter with roguelite elements. So everything about this reminds me of Hotline Miami, the art style, the gameplay, but... Yep. Roguelite now. That's going to be a little bit different because Hotline Miami really, at its core to me, felt like a puzzle game in a lot of ways, which I don't know how they'll mix everything here. We'll have to see, but it looks great. I don't know. All I know is I heard the soundtrack and I was instantly hooked. Yeah, it sounds they are really playing into the fact banging. that, hey, we're kind of making our own Hotline Miami. But uh, we're going to have roguelite elements, and it's a smart idea. And there's something cool going on with, like, the drinks you consume from the bartender. So, I don't know. This one looks like one to watch. Did you ever play Catan? I believe one time you had a friend over. This was years ago now. Over drinks, we played Catan. So, I don't remember the rules. I don't remember the rules either, but I do remember us playing. And I'm not very good at learning rules, but sometimes it helps if you put it in video game form. Okay, so, so what's this all mean? Catan Console Edition is oh. coming out on February 28th. Oh. Oh, yeah. So Catan fans have something to be excited. This is going to be on PlayStation and Xbox. PlayStation and yeah. Xbox, hence the console edition All thing. Right. Yeah. Um, there's already a Catan that's out on Switch that is unaffiliated with this. Really? So that's why it's not coming to Switch. Is that not a board game type thing? It is a board game. Oh, okay. So it is based on the board game. It's correct. Different. Correct. It's from a different uh, maker. So we have a console edition and then we have another console edition, basically. But they're calling this one the console edition. Correct. But this is all kind of weird and crazy. You got but, it. Okay. You got it. All right. I got this down now. This so one, this one's no Switch, right? Correct. But this one is developed by Nomad Games and published by Dovetail Games. And as we mentioned, releasing for the PlayStation and the Xbox, all of them. I'm not going to list them out again. You, you get it. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, you get so it. You get it. You Catan fans out there, get excited. Indie game developer Bakel Arts invites everyone to play the demo of Ashen Knights One Passage, the prologue to their debut project called Ashen Knights for Shadow. The demo launches at Steam Next Fest 23 on the 6th of February. It'll be the very first version of the game available to the general public. Any Steam user will be able to download it from the official Ashen Knights One Passage Steam page. The demo showcases the core gameplay features of Ashen Knights One Passage. While playing, gamers will experience the drastic difference in combat styles of the two protagonists, the dynamic hack and slash of Primos, and the challenging meditative souls-like of Evelyn. I think this looks kind of cool, based on what I saw. Sounds hard as hell. Hard to say also, some of these names, too. I gotta say, if you're gonna have a demo, you should have called that Foreshadow, because <laughs> that foreshadows the full release of the game. But oh, it's okay. I'll let it slide this time. Can we also take a moment to recognize how great of a name Primos is? It reminds me of a pizza. Or Optimus Prime is more what I'm okay. Or I Amazon was... <laughs> Prime, Jeffrey Bezos. I was thinking like a pizza. Like a primo pizza. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That's not where mine was, but you, you, you must be hungry. I don't know. Okay. It's been a long day. Every now and then, as a child, silent signs, I like to go outdoors, I like to wrestle around and tumble a bit with the boys. So that's why this next game 
struck a chord with me, though it doesn't look like you're wrestling in mud or anything like that. You're not wrestling with anything but losing a lot of time with Devolver's Tumble Time. Okay. The future's future of free-to-play games, How now available. Yeah, this seems interesting. It's an it's a mobile game, which yep. is not something I traditionally like, but I do like almost everything Devolver Digital puts out. So, this one's coming out for the iOS in the App Store and Google Play Store. It invites players to challenge their Devolver brand recognition in unpredictable 60-second slices of adrenaline-pumping chaos. Looks like they're going to have Gris here, Enter the Gungeon, Hotline Miami, Shadow Warrior, Serious Sam... Lots of franchises that you folks should recognize. I love that they're teasing us with Hotline Miami because I want another one so bad. I know Dang you it. love Hotline Miami. Uh, yeah, but are you going to check this out? Are you, no, you're not a mobile girl like you mentioned. But. I'm usually not, but this I am intrigued by just because of how brutally honest this trailer is. I think that's hilarious and it's Devolver. Yes, so let us know in the comments below. Are you going to check out Tumble Time? I'm pretty sure you picked this next story, so I'll let you go ahead and read it. Yeah, you can always tell when I pick the news as they slowly devolve into chaos, but uh, oh. Let Me Out Games and Excalibur Games are pleased to announce Heist Kitty, Cats Go Astray, a new multiplayer open world literature <coughs> sandbox <laughs> game where your goal is simple, cause as much cat chaos as possible. Heist Kitty, think Goat Simulator meets Stray, will launch on PC in May of this year. You know, I didn't know how I felt about this at first with the whole <laughs> sandbox open world deal and online integration, but I have to say it looks kind of ridiculous and fun. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you do like games like Goat Simulator or God, what was that other game that I played that was a simulator? Oh, man. With the Deer Simulator. Deer Simulator, Deer yeah. Deer Simulator. simulator. Cool game. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it properly with all of the letters yes, in it. Yes, that's when you were the giant deer running through buildings. Uh, with the guns and uh -huh. the antlers. Yeah, this yeah. kind of gives me that vibe as well, but uh -huh. instead it's a bunch of different cats. It's a wide variety of cats doing all sorts of zany things. I think this trailer, they were like on the dance floor. They're just wilding out. Yeah, I can't wait. DigiX Art and Raven's Court are thrilled to unveil Road 96. Spell that backwards and it's 69. Just nice. saying. Mile Zero, a narrative adventure game with a musical component and the prequel of the critically acclaimed Road 96. The game is due to release on April 4th on digital platforms across the PS4, 5, Xbox One, and you know the whole deal you here. It's deal. on Switch as well, so don't worry. And PC. Landlocked Heart, the brand new single from American synth band <laughs> The Midnight, was featured in this trailer. And that's the big takeaway for me. I liked the first game. I think it was incomplete in a lot of ways and it needed more work, but I'm glad yeah. they're doing another one. But I really love The Midnight. We've seen that band multiple times live. In fact, that's how I found out about this uh, prequel coming out is I saw it posted by The Midnight, who I follow. Yeah, we're huge Midnight fans. And the song in this trailer, I believe completely original. Yep. Like they wrote it just for this Landlocked game. Landlocked Heart. Sounds awesome. So the trailer's worth watching just for that. But no, mm -hmm. like I mentioned in the Discord when you brought this game up, I saw a lot of potential in the original Road for 96. Sure. So this Mile Zero prequel based on this trailer kind of looks like more of the same yeah but there's but we'll a see. rhythm game element to it which i really like yeah so we'll just have to see on this one i'm kind of excited about it this is a name i haven't heard in a quite a long time the pixel junk series returns with pixel junk scrappers deluxe tell us about it sure independent development studio q games announced that pixel junk scrappers deluxe will be playable for the very first time at the taipei game show from february 2nd to 5th i think we talked about that taipei game show a little bit last yeah, week as well. Yeah, there was another game featured there. It was that cool look. I can't think of the name right now. Yeah. The, Watch the last episode. The game will be shown as part of the official indie house lineup and attendees can get an exclusive early hands-on with the PC. Yes. I little limited experience with the Pixel Junk series over the years. It's I've a, played it on PS3 a bit. It's a party game brawler hybrid featuring a striking visual style and invites players to join a team of robot garbage collectors to clean up the streets of Junk Town with up to four players locally and online. I could get down with this because I'm always down for another party game in my collection, something we could play together on the Discord with people. And the Pixel Junk series, yeah, kind of been around for a long time as we mentioned. We'll just have to see if this party game style pixel junk works out well i like a party game atari really on a rampage these last few years with these recharged games and they're bringing another one to audiences very soon atari recharged 
Caverns of Mars is going to be the next one. Based on the classic vertical scrolling shooter, Caverns of Mars Recharged retains its retro charm and once again sees players descend through the subterranean landscapes of Mars where enemies are plentiful and ammo is limited. This is going to PC, console, Switch, and the Atari VCS, don't forget about that, mm -hmm. later this year. And Megan McDuffie, of course, on the soundtrack, doing the sounding soundtrack. great based on this trailer. I'm liking what I'm hearing. I have really enjoyed a lot of these recharged games. They haven't all been winners, but for the most part, this resurgence out of Atari has been impressive to me. It's kind of just nice to see, honestly. They've been around for so long. Yeah, who doesn't want to root for the underdog? And they yeah. became the underdog, you know? I think this is really cool to see them at least having some degree of success. And I don't even know if it's success, but they're trying. And they're bringing it to a new generation, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, well, they keep making them, so I guess they're making some kind of money. German developer Bonus Level Entertainment and French publisher Just For Games are blessed to reveal the release date for their upcoming expiatory story arcade game, Saga of Sins. This is coming March 30th of 23, Steam, Steam Deck compatibility guaranteed, PS5, 4, Xbox, Switch, everywhere pretty much. I thought this game looked excellent based on the trailer. It looks like they're gonna have 14 levels, seven bosses, has this stained glass style going on. I am excited for this because I love the style of stained glass, which is really ironic because I'm not a religious person. Usually you find stained glass at a church, but not me. <laughs> Hopefully this comes out better than Gleamlight. Which That's I what I was hoping for. I need like redemption from Gleamlight. A really which cool. such a beautiful art style, but uh. Yeah, but I like this. You're fighting the seven deadly sins, which I think is super cool. Yeah, I almost kind of got a old school Sega vibe out of this game. Yeah. Like, almost altered beast-like, but with that cool cathedral backdrop. I, I will I am excited. absolutely absolutely be playing this. Last but not least, horror visual novel The Many Deaths of Lily Cozen is live on Kickstarter. The Many Deaths of Lily Cozen is an upcoming visual novel by Too Many Teeth Studios, a small Melbourne-based developer. In it, you and your friends are being stalked by a terrifying demon, one which will stop at nothing to kill each and every one of you. How will you survive when every time you kill the demon, it comes back, hell-bent on revenge? I know someone in our Discord that would like this game. I don't even have to mention the name because they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> but I was watching this trailer and I almost got like this weird Friday the 13th vibe out of it, but with an anime aesthetic, I think this looks pretty cool. I would definitely play this. And you know what? I would love to hear Literary Rose read through this one like she did Corpse Factory. Yes, The Many Deaths of Lily Cozen is planned for a Steam release in 2023. It features gorgeous artwork and music to accompany the experience with a rewarding story. Well, I would hope they have music to accompany the experience. Yeah. Visual novel without any sort of music would be pretty lame. It'd be like reading a book. Imagine just sitting there. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a tranquility to that now that I think about it. You, you supply your own soundtrack in that case. Before we get into the videos featured right here at iDream of Indie Games this past week, we want to take a moment to thank yet another sponsor. We'll see you in a minute. Yo, I'm feeling a little desaturated, I guess is the word for it. Well, what's the cure for desaturation? Color, I would say. And thankfully, Orion Games is bringing us a lot of color this February with their release, Arto, our next sponsor for this week's episode of I Dream of Indie Games Weekly. Are you gonna start wearing makeup? No, I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna play this action RPG when it launches because it looks bright, beautiful, vibrant, and pretty unique from a lot of other indie games out there. In this title, the biomes called Artos have descended into chaos. Ah oh, man, imagine how depressing the world would be if everything was just black and white or a boring gray and white. Uh, yeah, that would suck. Yucky. Not only is this a unique world unlike other games you've seen before, but it also has a branching narrative to be discovered. I'm really digging all of the different art styles I'm seeing, even in the trailer. So how are you in art class, by the way? I was pretty terrible at drawing or painting or pretty much anything involving artwork. I was actually relatively decent. Never good, but okay. I could draw a wee wee, that was about it. That's not the kind of art I was doing. And that's not the kind of art you'll find in Arto either. This is a gorgeous looking title. I'm looking forward to discovering why all this color is missing. And I'm looking forward to the neon-y pixel art style of this one. Plus there's gonna be a ton of different upgrades, so hopefully this won't be a one and done type game, and there'll be reasons to go back and play again. 
Bob Ross would be proud. But I'll tell you what Bob Ross wouldn't like if you don't head down to the description box below and check out the links to Arto. He'll be pretty disappointed that you didn't check out this great hack and slash game releasing in February of 2023. Once again, we would like to thank our wonderful sponsor, Orion Games, for sponsoring this week's episode of I Dream of Indie Games Weekly. Start dusting off your paintbrushes and your palettes now. All right, let's get into all the videos that were featured on the channel this week. Quite a few of them, including our most recently re- well, outside of this one, most recently released video. Upcoming indie games we're excited about. That's going all the way up to February 5th. That video just released. A lot of you are enjoying that series. Thank you for your support of that. Brotherly Love was our latest episode of Who's Indie Is It Anyway? And we have an exciting announcement about Who's Indie Is It Anyway? While I'm on this topic, Silent Signs, is that this show is going Patreon exclusive. We wanted to make a very special show just for our huge, biggest, most special supporters out there that contribute and make our content possible. So this next episode of Who's Indie Is It Anyway? is going directly to Patreon for all you wonderful patrons to enjoy and you'll get it every two weeks going forward, regardless of what tier you're at. Very cool. Pretty exciting stuff, yeah. So if you're a fan of that series and you'd like to support us, consider heading over to patreon.com slash games. You'll get more original content like Who's Indie Is It Anyway. Really excited to do something special for our patrons. We've also been talking about some other ideas we have in the works to uh, say thank you. Yes, in fact, if you are a Patreon member, you'll probably see those rolling out very, very soon. We're gonna have a update there, a written update, which is going to go over some of the really fun, exciting things that you can look forward to, even at that $1.99 tier. We think it's a great value, and hopefully you do too. Whatever you do, thank you so much for supporting independent content. And hey, if you can't, obviously, subscribing, liking, all that stuff is fantastic. We're always going to have all of our reviews here, and speaking of reviews, we had a couple of them roll out this oh, week. Oh yeah, get your shoulders up. I got my shoulder out, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, King of the Hatch, a fan of our <laughs> live streams, will appreciate that. You're showing, you're showing us shoulders. <laughs> Big shoulder lover. Speaking of uh, shoulders, Shoulders of Giants is a game that I played and subjected you to as well this It week. is a game that you played, yes. 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 What'd yeah. you think? Um, it's... Um, well, it's, watch the review. It's functional. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dread Templar, another review from, was that Barely Magic Mike, I believe? It yeah. was. Yeah, so Dread Templar, FPS game, is reviewed. Steam World Build, you did some gameplay impressions. We had a sponsored stream with Thunderful, too, which was really awesome. You took some time off from work to go ahead and do a sponsored stream to do more work. I, I was, did. But, but was it fun work for you? No rest for the wicked, but it was fun, and it was cool to hear about what's in the works for Steam World, because not only Steam World Build, which is coming out sometime this year but they're working on some other steam world titles which are yet to be announced yes so. and the cool thing here too was that you also did some gameplay impressions to go mm -hmm. along with that live stream that people have been enjoying of the announced game steam world build what yes. did you think of it it's very cool i'm not typically a management resource you're not leader. a builder i'm not a building girly um <laughs> but i do like what they're doing with it they always kind of take a fun spin on uh old genre yeah they're really willing to try a lot of different things and i appreciate that about that series indeed and i think the fans like it too because it keeps them on their toes but Fear not, I feel like we're gonna get a mainline entry pretty soon. I also learned that everybody tells me I need to play SteamWorld Heist. Yes, and I have no inside knowledge, by the way. It's just a <laughs> gut feeling that we might get a third game here soon. I'm thinking so. Uh, the last review on the channel this week was Neptunia, Sisters vs. Sisters. Gosh, I feel like we've had a bunch of these Neptunia games on the channel over we the have. years. There's been a shoot 'em up style. You remember doing that one? There was the anime. The anime. <laughs> that was our only ever. I don't even know if that's on the channel anymore. I'm we not got sure, rid of that, but, but I watched it. There was an anime review at one time long, long ago. You old school fans might remember that. It was our one and only anime review, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe we should bring that back sometime. I don't know. Ah. Maybe not, though. It doesn't really. You see, YouTube doesn't like when you try new things. So no. I don't know. Whatever the case, that was all of the content featured right this week at I Dream of Indie Games. Thank you for supporting it, as always. Creator Spotlight this week. We had to think about this one for a little bit because we didn't have a suggestion in the Discord, which is usually a huge help, but didn't have to think too long because our old friend who used to work here at I Dream of Indie for a while, this was going back maybe, I don't know, about a year or so ago now, a year and a half maybe even, Wireless Riot. We wanted to shout out her YouTube channel. We know she's doing her own thing now. She's always got cooking streams going on over at her Twitch. You can get links to that on her YouTube channel as well. Looks like she's doing some indie content still, some demo playthroughs, that kind of thing. So shout out to Wireless Riot. 
be sure to use the link in the description box below if you want to show her some love and hit the subscribe button so that she can grow her channel as well. All right, question of the week. Yes, I came up with this one because I had a bad week. <laughs> I had a bad week with technology. Nothing seemed to be working. I had a bad OBS update or something. Oh, yeah. Let's hope that and doesn't happen. Everything again. went to poo. I guess we'll find out soon in our member stream if you have to like abort physically by pushing the power off button on the computer. Yeah, again. long story short, I was in a stream and I was stuck there because um, my computer crashed and everything wasn't working except for OBS was still going and I was still on camera. <laughs> couldn't play the game, couldn't change the scene, couldn't end the stream. Uh, but I could talk. You know, technology happens. We'll see. I rolled it back for you. So hopefully it was just a crappy update. So what I want to know is what is your worst experience with technology not working the way it should or like a technical difficulty, if you will? Oh, gosh, I have so many of those that it's really hard. Right now, my Windows button is not working. On yeah, Windows. that's that pretty is annoying. weird. I might actually have to get someone to fix this. So if you have suggestions, how do you get your Windows button to work again? Let me know in the comments below because I've tried all the tutorials and stuff and nothing's working. I think I just broke Windows, but you broke Windows. Outside of that, I've had this computer that I built. It showed up with a broken um, power. What's it called? Power supply. Yeah. And uh, that sucked because I was just wringing my head wondering, what the heck is wrong? What am I doing wrong? And it just turns out it was dead on arrival. And I know uh, Alan or Chocobo Chokeslam, as you may know him from YouTube, um, he had a PS5 recently that was DOA. Yeah, I that scares me a little bit because I just yeah. recently got one as well. Is mine going to die soon too? I don't know. So let us know yours. Yes, I'd love to know. hear it. Make me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> you had anything where you just slammed your desk, you were so angry at technology. Or you, you know, walked away like an adult. Yeah, did you hit the computer and it start working again? We want to hear all about it. But for now, that is all, folks. Thanks for tuning in for another week of I Dream of Indie Games Weekly. We're here every single Sunday. We have up upcoming indie games every Saturday and then we have a bunch of reviews and everything else going on streams the channel, which is streams Monday through Friday 6 p.m. Eastern and, and sometimes then on sometimes Saturday. Saturday like tonight <laughs> you're all dolled up for it looking great with those balls on your head they're not Love balls it. they're buns okay buns whatever you want to call them thanks for keeping your buns locked in for indie <laughs> game content and we'll see you on the channel bye